time to get into spirit guides and guardians. And yes, everybody has them. So what are they? They can be any of the kinds of spirits that I mentioned above, even in a kind of thought form energy is entirely possible. I've even seen some people create shields or little, I shouldn't say little, energies around them that serve them in some capacity that may not even have an entire sentience to itself except for what it does. So yeah, keep in mind, you can grow these things for yourself just like you can invite some guides, um, just like you can have guides come to you halfway through your life. It's important to note that there will be some guides that are like ride or die, they come in at the very beginning, they watch you your entire life and they're there to greet you on the other side at the end of it. Other times there are guides who come in at a very specific time in your life to help you with that specific thing. And then when you're done, they're very much like, oh, okay, cool, you graduated, it's been nice knowing you. That doesn't necessarily mean you can't ever reach out to them again. It just means that they may be reassigned. They may, you know, just not be as involved. But remember, like if you need something from them, so long as they're okay with answering, you can reach back out to them again and be like, hey, can you, remind me what happened that time, or I'm, I'm really down right now, something like that. So there are a lot of varieties of like options and like what's going on with spirit guides. It's also important to note that spirit guides may have a different kind of vibration to them. So just because you're reading ghosts doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to read spirit guides. It's not that you can't, it's just kind of like, turning the dial in order to do so. It's just how some people can read guides, but they have issues reading deities. Once again, the dial, it's a level of vibration, and we're gonna go over that in another course in more depth. So when it comes to spirit guides, especially if you have a guide perhaps that is a past loved one uh, in some capacity, how are they created? And I wrote this down because I wanted to get it right. When putting their old physical needs aside, for the great purpose of assisting us to achieve and learn what we came here for. That means bias, <laughs> right? So um, for example, if you have a religious past loved one who is convinced that the only way you can be your best is by following a very specific religious dialogue that they followed themselves, that's not putting their bias aside. Now granted, they could always be like, hey, I would really like for you to go to a religious institution. Though, if they want to connect on a higher level of what your lessons are in this life, rather than try and push you in a direction that they wanted for themselves, they're going to push you in a direction that you wanted for yourself. That is the big difference here. Past loved ones can become spirit guides. It's a matter of how much do they want to ascend. Sometimes I've actually run into people who kind of go into this sort of cocoon or meditative state after they've passed because they want to be the best that they can be, because they want to put their bias aside and they want to sort of level up to become a better understanding of their higher self as well in order to assist the person that they're hanging out with. The following is going to be an example of ancestral ties because you'll have your ancestral ties and then you'll have your soul ties and then sometimes you have otherworldly beings and sometimes you'll have souls that never even worked with you before in some capacity on our linear time uh, on our lineal uh, on our linear timeline and just want to hang out with you in this life for whatever reason to grow that kind of bond or understanding. They can be a lot of things and yes they can be animals too. <laughs> they can be otherworldly beings. It's it's everything that I mentioned before. <laughs> So this ancestral tie that I'll share, um, basically I was talking to a client, I made a connection with their guide, I made a connection that they were an ancestor. And this ancestor was showing me kind of like a day in their life. And it was like different days um, and different seasons. And they, they showed me what their occupation was, they showed me where they were in Canada, they showed they were just all about details and information, which was super great for me because not all guides will tell you everything because they can have boundaries too. But anywho, they started to show me this jar that they had of money. And this was before like common banks and they kind of lived out in the middle of nowhere. So they didn't really want to go into town for that and that kind of thing. So they showed this jar and then they showed this uh, plank of wood on the ground or on the flooring um, where they would put the jar and how they just kept stuffing money away. And I got the feeling that they were talking about, like basically, and it was cool because um, both the husband and the wife were kind of in and out as guides. 
And they started to show how the money was for something. It wasn't just to sit on, but they wanted to keep it in one place to understand what their goals were in order to invest back in the house. And I'm telling this whole story and I'm talking about, you know, like hard work and like making good decisions and like not beating yourself up if you have to use some of the money, but understanding where it goes to. And then the client was just like, that's interesting. We're going to be buying a house soon and we've been doing a lot of saving and understanding it. Like the metaphor that I was giving was very aligned with their life in the last like three years. <laughs> Little did I know at the time. So yeah, um, sometimes guides can come through as sharing stories and that sort of thing, um, sharing metaphors. And yeah, they can have that kind of ancestral connection. I also found out from that client later that they did have ancestry from that part in Canada. So validation for me. Another example is a soul tie. Somebody that I had a consultation with recently, they were the reincarnation of who their guide knew in a last life. And I see this a lot, like sometimes ancestral guides, they'll go through different lines or they'll like kind of grow and they'll, they'll help different um, people going down the line. Um, and then sometimes there'll be soul ties and they may come through different times sometimes they will go through almost every life it really just kind of depends on what kind of growth your soul and their soul is looking to do so i was seeing for this guide reading i was seeing a lot of things in archaeology i was seeing that the guide themselves was a woman and she was one of the first from the archaeologists i saw that it was during world war ii so they were open to hiring women in archaeology at that time and then in that life, I started to see that there was this man, there was an older man that she really looked up to and he was the one to even invite her out on these archeological digs, even though other men on the digs were very like against it and that's like that kind of thing. And I was talking more about more details and like what they did together and that sort of thing. And then the guide was like, the man, that's who you're talking to. <laughs> so that was a past life. And so I was like, hey, cool. Uh, so your guide is super cool. She's really, you know, like very much a feminist for her time and all that stuff. And I asked the person, I was like, does any of this resonate to you? And she was like, I love archaeology. <laughs> I was like, okay. And she said, I was literally watching something on an archaeological dig right before we talked. And I was like, perfect. So you find that with guides too. You know them better than you think you do. You just may not always know the details of who you're talking to. They oftentimes will enjoy doing activities that you enjoy doing. They become this uh, higher vibrational activity. Little did she know that watching archaeological videos was a way that she was able to connect not only with her past life but also with her guide. Just like we can have spirit guides, land and cities and houses and different spots can also have spirit guides. Very common one that are typically easier for us to connect with would be burial ground guardians. They can look pretty trippy. Like, let me, let me just put that out there. Every now and then I'll get a very human looking burial ground being, but otherwise I've seen some really long limbed, tall, different colors, different eyes, like, they can be very otherworldly looking. Those can be grown over time according to what kind of energy is drawn to that burial ground. So we're talking about thought form energies, perhaps some soul, uh, and it just kind of grows from there. Sometimes there are otherworldly energies that are just like, ah, I'm looking for a new place, uh, a new occupation, a new job, what have you, and then they go there. Um, there are river beings as well. I love connecting with rivers. I love asking rivers what's going on, what can I do, what would you like, what have you seen. Some rivers are chatty, other rivers, I know like the Cape Fear out here, goodness, she comes across like a very deep tenor and she only says exactly what she wants to say. She never blabbers, she's just very straightforward. She has very specific words to say. There are mountain beings. There are guardian spirits of mountains. And goodness, talk to anybody who lives in the Appalachian Mountains because they got stories. And depending on which mountain you're on and who is protecting it and what are they doing there, you can have a very different vibe from the next mountain over. You have forest beings. Yeah, some folks, they kind of reside over these kind of nature areas. But just like you have in forest beings where they might be connected to the trees, 
you also have the same sorts of energies for towns. It's like when you walk into a town and you just get a feeling. That has something to do not only with the residual energy, but also who kind of looks over it, who holds it, that kind of thing. You kind of see this sort of crossover um, in Catholicism where you have saints for different places. Yeah, the concept is very similar. Are they all bad? Nah, <laughs> a lot of them are just what they are. <laughs> they may have different morals from us, though as far as removing them goes, a lot of them are pretty old, they're pretty attached. Um, I would recommend more so compromising when you can, even if that's to say, hey, can we have this compromise for the duration of my life, which is going to be exactly what it needs to be and not anytime sooner, that kind of thing. Um, it's, it's worth it to see what you can compromise on. And really that comes from a matter of respect of being like, hi, I acknowledge you, I understand that you're there, I wanna be the best that I can be and we're in this together for however long that's going to be will you work with me even if that's just to basically establish that we don't work with each other <laughs> all of that all of those things are options